Hi everyone, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. So I'm Komal Tehlan from Vegan Outreach and I'm live. This is our first live in 10 Weeks to Vegan uh, India. This is our FB group for helping new vegans go vegan. Uh, people who are making this transition and switching to plant-based diet. So this group is to help you. And today we will be talking about speciesism. And for that we have our special guest Manisha. She is about to join us. So you guys can ask your questions in the chat section or mm -hmm. comment section right so let's just wait for manisha to join in and we'll start a conversation so uh, i've got this i'm adding you manisha i'm pretty pretty excited for this live this group is to help new vegans so if you guys have any questions related to anything feel free to ask hi manisha Hi, finally we are, <laughs> we are set. Yes. Yeah. yes, we are set. How are you doing? Right. I'm good. How is everyone else? Everything is awesome. I'm so excited. Thank, first of all, thanks for coming. Okay. Yeah. This yeah. is a great help because this is our, uh, you know, FB group to help vegans and to provide support to, you know, people who are making, uh, uh, you know, shift right. to plant-based diet. So thanks for mm. being here. Uh, since you are here, I would like to give you this opportunity to uh, tell us about yourself. Uh, my name is Manisha. I have been a vegan for almost more than a decade now. Uh, I went vegan when I was in college. And uh, so my journey has been has not been without challenges, uh, as is the case of every vegan. So, uh, you know, I had my transitioning time. I had my share of challenges. And a few years into being vegan, I realized that, you know, just being vegan is not enough. Uh, you know, I need to speak out because as long as I'm not speaking out against the injustice, just abstaining from the injustice is not enough because that is not how we can get others to change. So advocacy is very important. Uh, that is one when, when I became an activist. And now uh, I spend a lot of my time outside work. Uh, to talk about veganism, I go to colleges, I go, I attend several workshops and uh, I am always willing and always open to educate new people who are uh, willing to transition and help them on their journey because when I went vegan, I did not have this kind of a support system because obviously things, uh, the vegan movement in India was very, very nascent at that time, hardly anyone and very few people knew the term vegan. So uh, since I didn't have the support system, I learned everything through my own struggles. So which is why I feel very important right now to be a support, you know, to build that support system for people who want to uh, transition. So that's been my journey. And that's a little bit about myself. Wow. First of all, like big congratulations, because you're a vegan for more than a decade. decade and yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, th thanks for being so kind, you know, you're so right. It is really important that when we start this our journey, uh, when we uh, go vegan, we need people to guide us, to help us with uh, so many things. Because there are a lot of challenges. Uh, Manisha, why are vegan? Kyu bane? Why did you go vegan? Uh, vegan is one of the reasons. I think uh, I don't think there is any, any reason why we should not be. I think oh, there are all the reasons why we should be. So, uh, so if I summarize, uh, sari hain. Uh, I, I have been an animal lover all my life. You know, ever since I was a child, I used to bring home injured animals and uh, care for them and release them uh, in their natural habitat. So when I talk about animals, it was not limited. Even as a child, my empathy was not, uh, compassion was not only limited to dogs and cats. Of course, they are the most common animals we see in our neighborhood. So obviously, we, I used to bring home neighborhood cats and dogs who were injured and uh, nurse them and, you know, heal them and send them back to their homes. Uh, but at, the, at that time, even I used to, uh, you know, care for injured birds, uh, which fell out of their nests, etc. And uh, that is when the connection, that, that connection was always there, that value of every life. And mm. uh, though as a child, I kept eating uh, whatever my parents put on my plate, uh, unaware of where it is coming from, unaware that it is a life, it is some, someone or something that is exactly similar to the dogs and cats I saved. Uh, which is when, and when I grew up, I, when I understood that this is what is happening and, and, you know, on the, on one hand, when I'm rescuing and, uh, 
uh, caring for sick and injured dogs and cats. I'm eating other animals who are exactly like them and there is no moral difference. Uh, so I, I realized that I was wrong and that was that moment of uh, you know, realization and I decided to go vegan. Wow. You're so right. You know, we love dogs and cats and we call ourselves animal lovers. But somewhere uh, we, uh, you know, ig ignore certain animals in the sense that we don't realize the food choices we are making. They are impacting animals. So, yeah, right. Uh, Manisha, since, uh, you know, uh, you have shared your reason and this is going to... Uh, you know, bring me to the topic, to our main topic today, speciesism. So could you please, uh, first of all, elaborate on what is speciesism? And how uh, we speciesism, yes. Yes, yes. So just what I talked about right now is speciesism. That is how we have grown, uh, you know, in our society that we attach a certain value or importance to uh, one species saying that this species is cute and they deserve our love and this species is food we demarcate we uh, sort of you know attach a tag to one species and we uh, call some species friends and some species food that exactly is what is speciesism i mean i do not want to go to go into the very technicalities of the term there is a philosophical and uh, you know very technical definition to speciesism like of attaching a higher value to uh, one life or one species of animals above another uh, that exactly is what the technical and the philosophical uh, you know explanation of the word is uh, but I mean in, in very simple terms if we have to you know talk about it in layman terms it is like uh, saying that one animal deserves to live more than another so, uh, you know, like th that is so rampant in our society where, uh, you know, uh, people who love dogs and cats are so indifferent to the suffering of chicken because uh, and they sort of justify the suffering of chicken saying that it is the circle of life. You know, they, they, they it's OK to kill them. They don't feel I mean, even if they feel pain, no one denies, of course, that they, they feel pain or they suffer when they die. But they say that it's OK for them to die. I mean, what is the big deal? But when a dog dies or a cat dies or they suffer, then it is it is very horrific for a lot of people. Uh, this this differential, this 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 feeling, this different reaction to the suffering of different species of animals is also speciesism. हम लोग कुछ जानवरों को प्यार करते हैं, कुछ जानवरों को दोस्त समझ समझते हैं, कुछ जानवरों का शोषण, अत्याचार, दर्द को हम justify करते हैं. बोलते हैं कि वो वो सही है ठीक है मतलब सफर तो करते हैं बट सही है तो दिस इज वॉट इज स्पीशिजम इसको हम हिंदी में प्रजातिवाद बोलते हैं एक प्रजाति दूसरे प्रजाति से ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है ज्यादा महत्व रखता है या उनका जीवन इनके जीवन से ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंट है इनको जीने का ज्यादा हक है यही स्पीशिजम है वेरी वेल एक्सप्लेन मनीषा थैंक यू सो मच बिल्कुल सही कहा Uh, ये प्रजातिवाद भेदभाव है जो कि हम लोग जाने अनजाने में करते हैं कि कुछ प्रजातियां को हम दोस्त समझते हैं और कुछ को हम एक भोजन के रूप में ही सिर्फ देखते हैं सो आई होप ऑल ऑल मस्ट बी क्लियर ऑन द डेफिनेशन दैट इट इज द डिस्क्रिमिनेशन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ स्पीशीज मनीषा वट डू यू थिंक की हाउ वी कैन एंड दिस हम कैसे uh, थोड़ा uh, इस चीज को खत्म कर सकते हैं स्पीशिसिज्म uh, खत्म करने का एक ही तरीका है कि हम हर हर उस जानवर को जानवर से एम्पथाइज करें uh, उस जानवर का uh, मतलब पहला चीज तो हमको वीगन बनना है दैट इज द ओनली ओनली वे टू एंड स्पीशिसिज्म बट हाउ हाउ शुड वी स्टॉप लुकिंग एट यू नो डिफरेंट एनिमल्स इन अ डिफरेंट वे और ट्रीटिंग एनिमल्स डिफरेंटली इज टू रियलाइज और टू यू नो कम आउट ऑफ द डिस्कनेक्ट दैट वी हैव विथ सम एनिमल्स and uh, you know to make the connection that is the first thing that we have to realize uh is ke context mein main bolna chahungi uh, there is a very very in depth uh, very deep philosophical writing by peter singer uh, mm -hmm. called animal liberation i mm -hmm. think everyone should read that book first thing is uh, to understand this better main is session mein kitna bata paungi ya kitna explain kar paungi uh, usse bhi better hai ki to get get a deeper understanding of speciesism how it is ingrained in our society 
how it is a how it is linked with other forms of discrimination and other forms of uh, exploitation uh, that is how peter singer has uh, sort of outlined it in his book in his book animal liberation so it is easily available on amazon i think everyone should read uh, animal liberation by peter singer to understand how our how our society itself is speciesist and we have always always been speciesist ever since the beginning of time uh so uh, so you know so uh, that is the main thing that we have to realize and we have to understand that there is no moral difference between a dog cat or a pig or a cow or a chicken um, uh, yeah every every species deserves to live every animal deserves to live that is an inherent and a basic right um, uh, and we are and, and you know by letting an animal live also i want to mention another thing is that uh, people have some kind of a savior complex where they uh, you know feel superior when they save an animal or they spare an animal's life i think that also is 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 a part of is is a mm -hmm. extension of speciesist behavior where we feel entitled to uh, you know decide whether an animal should live or an animal should not live so we are no one to decide you know we didn't create them they are not here for us and they are not for us to decide whether their lives should be extended or they should be ended so mm -hmm. uh, the only way to uh, end speciesism is to understand that it is wrong and uh, to understand that every life has value and basically go vegan that's that's it mm -hmm. right absolutely right uh, sabse pehle to we have to go vegan hame और किसी भी तरह का एनिमल यूज और एनिमल को एनिमल फ्री प्रोडक्ट यूज करें और एनिमल यूज को सपोर्ट ना ही करें राइट right? किसी भी तरीके से एनिमल्स को यूज आई मीन फॉर एनी पर्पस वी शुड नॉट बी यूजिंग एनिमल्स फॉर फूड और फॉर एनी थिंग राइट एंड यू सो राइट लेकिन मनीषा uh, कई बार हम समझ नहीं पाते कि हम कैसे स्पीचिज्म का पार्ट है तो आप एक एग्जाम्पल देंगे आपने एक एग्जाम्पल ऑलरेडी दिया कि आप डॉग्स और कैट्स को रेस्क्यू कर रही थी लेकिन एक और एग्जाम्पल कोई और आप जो देना चाहेंगे प्रैक्टिकल लाइफ में जो हम सब इन अ वे ऐसा कर रहे हैं एक ऐसा भेदभाव पहला ही पहला हाँ प्रजातिवाद तो पहला ही भेदभाव ऐसा क्यों कर रहे हैं क्यों हमारे हमारे सोसाइटी में समाज में क्यों स्पीशीजम है ये इसीलिए है क्योंकि हो सकता है कई सदियों से सिंस थाउजेंड्स ऑफ इयर्स ऑफ आर सिविलाइजेशन आई थिंक हमने जब से डोमेस्टिकेट करना शुरू किया एनिमल्स को तब से शायद हम लोग को ये लगने लगा है दैट वी आर एंटाइटल्ड इन सम वे We have given this entitlement to ourselves. हम खुद को एंटाइटल समझते हैं कि हम डिसाइड कर सकते हैं कि हम किसको प्यार करेंगे किसको अपना कंपेनियन बनाएंगे और किस किसका हम इस्तेमाल करेंगे ये शायद इफ यू गो बैक टू टू द एजेस ऑफ अर्ली मैन या जब से सेटलमेंट सेटल सिविलाइजेशन स्टार्ट हुआ तब से ही है मैन हैज ऑलवेज बिन सॉरी डॉग हैज ऑलवेज बिन मैंस फ्रेंड बट uh, mm -hmm. जैसे सेटलमेंट uh, स्टार्ट हुआ सेटल सिविलाइजेशन हंटर गैदर से हम लोग जैसे ही एग्रीकल्चरल uh, सिविलाइजेशन mm -hmm. बने तब से यू नो बोवाइन एनिमल्स लाइक काउस बुलॉक्स एंड बफलोज दे हैव बिन डोमेस्टिकेटेड एंड यूज तो तब से वो एक परसेप्शन बन गया है कि ये जानवर यूज के लिए है uh, ये जानवर हमारे हमारे दोस्त हैं Uh, to add to that again i'm not going to go into the religious angle of it but but ye bhi this this aspect i cannot help but uh, you know touch upon this though it's very sensitive but still you know without disrespecting any any religion uh, to add to this our religious scriptures are also very speciesist where they say things like ki you know janwar hamare istemal ke liye banaye gaye hain ईश्वर ने जानवर को इंसान धरती पे इंसान के इस्तेमाल के लिए रखे हैं ये जानवर हम यूज कर सकते हैं या सारे जानवर हम इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं ह्यूमन बींग्स आर द क्रीम ऑफ क्रिएशन एंड ह्यूमन बींग्स आर द पिनिकल ऑफ क्रिएशन ह्यूमन बींग्स आर गॉड्स बेस्ट क्रिएशन सो दीज थिंग्स आर वेरी डीप रूटेड ये रिलीज ये रिलीजियस स्क्रिप्चर्स हम पढ़ते हैं हमको पता नहीं क्यों बताया जाता है कि वी आर द पिनिकल ऑफ क्रिएशन बिकॉज क्लियरली वी आर नॉट वी आर जस्ट हियर वी आर शेयरिंग द प्लान विद एवरीबडी We are not the pinnacle of creation, but ये आ, हमारे सेल्फ मेड जो रिलीजियस स्क्रिप्चर्स है उसमें ये बताया जाता है कि इंसान सबसे श्रेष्ठ क्रिएशन है और सारे जानवर इंसान के इस्तेमाल के लिए है 
be it for even even uh, if you look at it very deeply even the animals that we keep as companions and we love uh, do we look at them as equals or do we look at them as uh, you know as someone inferior to us because again i think the word pet if you th- think of the word pet the word pet itself is speciesist you know uh, we sh- why should we call them pets pets itself uh, says ki wo thoda sa humse hinti rahe hum usko pet kar sakte hain that should not be the word the should the word should be companion because when i talk about uh, you know the my animal friends i talk about them as animal mm-hmm. companions i do not talk about them as pets because i feel very really uncomfortable talking uh, about them as pets because they mm-hmm. they are my friends i i am sharing my life with them i am yes mm-hmm. they are in my care i am giving them food and shelter but mm-hmm. i think it's a symbiotic relationship where i am also deriving emotional support mm-hmm. from them बिकॉज यू नो जो एनिमल्स हम घर पे रखते हैं हम उन पे दया नहीं कर रहे हैं ये भी हमको सोचना है कि हो सकता है वो हमको फूड एंड शेल्टर नहीं दे रहा है लेकिन इमोशनल बहुत सारे इमोशनल सपोर्ट इमोशनल कंफर्ट और डी स्ट्रेस हम हम लोग उन लोगों से डी स्ट्रेस्ड होते हैं तो कहीं ना कहीं हमारा रिलेशन सिम्बायोटिक है वेर सो आई डो नॉट बिलीव इन यूजिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ अ वर्ड वेर दे आर शोन एज इंफीरियर एंड we are the superior people because we are feeding and uh, you know sheltering them kahin na kahin agar ye in lieu of food and shelter if we look at them as uh, inferior fir mm-hmm. fir wahi us theory se to hum apne bachcho ko bhi inferior samajh sakte hain hai na ya hamare aging parents ko bhi hum inferior samajh sakte hain ya aisa kisi mm-hmm. ko hum inferior samajh sakte hain jiska hum caregiver hai uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people care for their elderly aged parents a lot of people care for their young children so mm-hmm. if there is no love if there is no mutual giving and taking mm-hmm. and a symbiotic relationship then then it just becomes a business fir to wo vyapar ho gaya hai na agar hum kisi ko in lieu of our services if we think that they are inferior to us fir wo vyapar ho gaya to speciesism ye sari cheezon ko address karta hai aur ye sari cheeze hi speciesist hai where we think ki pet hai wo matlab you know that that condescending also there's an element of condescension to the word pet so i think mm-hmm. we should uh, and and our language is replete with speciesism uh ye ek speciesist word hai pet where we should i think probably upgrade ourselves to using the word animal companion because they are our companions uh also lot of things like you know using the word donkey for a for a person who is foolish uh which is so unjustified i mean why would you use a donkey as a as a you know synonym for foolish because do you know how uh, uh, if a donkey is foolish we have just assumed that donkey is foolish mm-hmm. which they are not anyway i mean donkeys are pretty smart so so i mean why would you use the word donkey for someone who's foolish so our uh, you know this is how our uh, language our little little nuances social things that we do they are mm-hmm. all uh, you know so replete with uh, speciesism our language is so speciesist so the only way to end this is to you know think about it deeply mm-hmm. and definitely we need to read what other philosophers or what people in the movement are saying like i mentioned about peter singer's animal liberation that gives that really will change your perspective how we can change this is that we have to bring changes in our attitude uh, when we uh, you know look at our uh, companion animals and when we look at other animals i think all of us whoever has had uh, animals in their lives as companions and friends i'm sure their perspective they are more open to uh, you know challenge their uh, you know age what what they have learned and they are more open to unlearn all these things and turn vegan i think veganism is the first thing first step the second step is to actually you know bring changes in your mindset i mean that is something that doesn't come instantly but it will come i think so so these are few mm-hmm. things i can you know talk about right now wow i i love how uh, you know uh, you have went in the depth and you have like explained it so well i mean i um, i really love the uh, this point that the kind of words we are using right and we definitely need to change our attitude because uh, it's so right we we somewhere feel uh, superior that okay we are petting them or uh, it's it's somewhere the conditioning it's a learned behavior i i feel right and uh, you're so right it has started because we have been um, seeing this from the past or you know in, in our history we have seen this that people have domesticated certain animals and we feel it's okay to use such a, those animals 
so uh, so right but yes definitely uh, you have all, also given the solution we can end speciesism by uh, first of all going vegan secondly we we need to change our uh, attitude which will eventually change our uh, language also the kind of words we use and yeah it's it's a conditioning and it's a learned behavior and we need to like unlearn and then learn new uh, uh, you know uh, words and uh, attitudes i would say or beliefs and have to see animals as individuals rather than us uh, objects or food or anything else right yes. love that uh manisha do you think like uh, how much our education system has played role in that yes that's a very important thing about how our education system plays a role uh, like i said that this is something that uh, has not been questioned since centuries what has been uh, what uh, happened at the beginning of civilization where people assigned certain value to certain species of animals that this is friend this is food uh, i think we have not uh, we have let centuries pass by before uh, before now it's the 21st century when we are stopping and questioning these age old things that have passed through the generations this is the time when we are actually saying hey wait what what we have done over thousands of years was actually wrong and this doesn't make sense and we need to make a change to this uh, but what it what has happened is and how our education system has again evolved into this very speciesist thing is because we de- didn't dare to question or we didn't dare to challenge what was passed on to us by our previous generations and that is what i see is when when i uh, look into my children's notebook uh, sorry textbooks and what i read as a child nothing has changed like right? as a child i read uh, cows give us milk cows give us milk uh, goats give us meat uh, and hens and give us egg. eggs Thanks. yes eggs give us hens and it's the same thing that has continued 20 years down the line also now when i see what my children are studying it's the same thing and and it's mm-hmm. it's it's like cows give us milk which is mm-hmm. which is where i rebel and i tell them that uh, no when you are asked to write please don't write cows give us milk please say we take milk from cows this is how mm-hmm. i am bringing a change is when i go i rebel mm-hmm. and i tell my children that no when you are asked to write you will not write cows give us milk you will write we take milk from cows we kill goats to take their meat and we take uh, eggs from hens they don't give us anything they uh, no cow or a hen or goat comes and tells us that please take my meat or please take my milk or please take my uh, you know eggs so we take it from them they don't give us anything and i am willing i told them that you go and write this in your notebooks and if your teacher challenges you or uh, marks it wrong i am willing to challenge the entire education system because this is what is right and i am not scared to even go and discuss this with your uh, teachers mm-hmm. and what i will this is just an incident that i want to actually talk about is that uh, you know sometimes we uh, we fear or we hold ourselves ba- back from an act of rebellion thinking that oh god i mean how can i create a scene and and, and also create a scene uh, when it is a matter of my child's school or my child's education mm-hmm. it doesn't matter what i believe i don't believe that they give us milk or eggs but they have to pass and they have to get through with their exam so let mm-hmm. them just write what's there in the book Mm-hmm. why to challenge the entire education system and why to create a ruckus because that's how we hold ourselves back because these mm-hmm. are the fears or these are the things that hold ourselves back from an act of rebellion but sometimes i think these are assumptions that we make we just assume that no there will will not be people to connect with us but i'll tell you one very good thing that happened is when my children wrote this and and they are very vocal about animal rights and veganism they are totally unabashed they are very vocal they go to school they speak about it so uh, so when my child went and wrote this in school and his teacher his teacher didn't uh, scold him as such but she was a little curious why he wrote this when this was not what was written in the books so he mm-hmm. said yes ma'am this is what happens we don't actually we don't take it we, we take it from them they don't give it to us mm-hmm. and his his teacher was very appreciative she said that yes i like that and i agree with you 
and uh, and then he spoke about veganism he told her what veganism i mean she knows of course every i mean now that word is very uh, well known so she explained that to him and uh, sorry uh, he explained that to her and she was inspired and she said yes i mean you know since a long time i have also been uh, contemplating on turning vegan but uh, uh, i am not finding the right kind of support so so you know so that is why but but very well done and he she was very impressed by what he said and what he wrote so i think sometimes you know you should just follow your heart and not be scared of the consequences because i think truth has great power if you're speaking the truth you don't need to be scared of anyone or anything i was willing to take take on the entire education system i was willing to even talk to his principal or even the cbsc board if they would ask me that why are you teaching your children this thing and if if they would question me i would probably question them back that why are you teaching my children lies and teaching all the children lies because this is a lie what i am telling is the truth what i am teaching my children is the truth what you are teaching them in textbooks is a lie so so i was willing and i think this is a message i would want to send out to everybody Mm-hmm. that never never back off from uh, you know speaking the truth if you speak the truth i i think truth has great power that that itself will you know uh, give you that strength and confidence to take down any system so wow. so that's that's one thing yeah so as you said how does our education system contribute so this is the way our education system contributes mm-hmm. where we uh, you know talk of uh, things that like you know these animals mm-hmm. give us these things when they don't mm-hmm. and also there are these horrible uh, you know i found these uh, poems very dis- uh, you know very disturbing even when i was not vegan because when you think of it it actually is so uh, you know it's like mocking someone's uh, pain i think we have all learned this um, a nursery rhyme hindi nursery rhyme when we were children machli jal ki rani hai jeevan uska pani hai haath lagao to dar jati hai bahar nikalo to mar jati hai theek hai mm-hmm. now uh, if you see how the children are taught to recite it is with with a lot of you know laughter and lot of expressions when it is a very sad thing actually bahar nikal to mar jati hai why do we have to teach our children to you know recite it in such a nice and happy way it's actually a very sad thing so when you are actually teaching your children to be happy or to uh, you know uh, make fun or mock someone's mm-hmm. death the creature's death bahar nikal to mar jati hai it's a very sad mm-hmm. thing but we are teaching our children to recite it with such a lot of laughter and expressions when it is a naturally very star yeah absolutely i used to find it very even uh, you know i used to find it very disturbing even before i had my children and i used to hear other children reciting it and uh, when i was a little older not not an adult but when i was a little older i used to think why are we taught to recite this with such a lot of you know expressions and laughter when it's a very dark and sad thing that wo bahar nikal nikalo to wo mar jati hai to hum uske marne ka itna प्यार से क्यों बात कर रहे हैं ये तो बहुत सैड चीज है इसमें हम हंस क्यों रहे हैं हम उसका उसके डेथ को कितना नॉर्मलाइज कर रहे हैं कि ठीक है चलो बाहर निकालो तो मर जाती है तो ये ये बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो आई थिंक मुझे लगता है बहुत डीपली सोचने पे हम रियलाइज करते हैं कि कहीं ना कहीं हमने आ, कुछ जानवरों का सफरिंग को कितना नॉर्मलाइज किया है सो so, so that that's that's how you know our education system has been and i'm happy that we have actually taken a pause at some point in our civilization to actually uh, revolt against these and question these that why is it like this it should not be going forward we we will certainly i'm sure like maybe 10 or 15 years down the line i think the textbooks will change and we will stop saying that we they give us milk or they give us meat or they give us uh, you know eggs so i'm sure uh, even though even even if the animal uh, agriculture industries don't end by 15 years it's too early to say that they will end of course things are changing uh, it's reducing a lot of these uh, industries are closing down but a total uh, you know total shutdown of animal agriculture might not happen in the next 10 15 years but i'm sure that there will be uh, at least the species language will change the textbooks will change that is what i'm very hopeful of wow yeah. uh even i am hopeful because we have people like you uh so really bold of you to you know uh, the way confidently you taught your son that hey it's okay you know if your teacher asks you just uh, I- i'm ready to you know talk to them and it is so inspirational that your kid explained that to your teacher and she got inspired so manisha that's a very uh, you know extraordinary example that you are setting and your kids are doing 
Thank I'm you. I'm so open now because vegan kids, people like you are raising vegan kids. So I'm. I mean, I got goosebumps when you you when you said that your son actually confronted your teacher and he started explaining. And and you're so right. You know, education system needs to change, and people uh, like us need to intros introspect and question that it's it's actually not normal. We are literally mocking someone's uh, suffering and death. And uh, I mean, really thoughtful of you that you at that age you thought that why we are saying it so normally in in a, in that way. You know, uh, we are laughing about it. So yes, such me, what सोचने वाली चीजें हैं. और यू यू सो राइट एजुकेशन सिस्टम शायद ये अगेन वही कंडीशनिंग वाली बात है हमें बचपन से ही हम ये सुनते आ रहे हैं गाय दूध देती है मुर्गी अंडे देती है तो वो हमें भी बड़े होते होते लगता है कि यार हाँ नॉर्मल है इसमें क्या है वी डोंट सी एनीथिंग रॉन्ग इन दैट एक्शन और कुछ उसमें कोई सफर कर रहा है वी लाइक डिसकनेक्ट फ्रॉम दैट थिंग सो आई एब्सोलूटली लव यू हैव यू नो गिवन दिस सोल्यूशन की हमें एक्चुअली अपने आप को क्वेश्चन करने की जरूरत है और वो एक मेंटल शिफ्ट तभी आएगा तब हम जब उन चीजों के बारे में थोड़ा सा रुक के ठहर के सोचेंगे वी नीड टू पॉज एंड वी नीड टू सी दैट व्हाट वी हैव बीन डूइंग कोई किसी चीज को इसलिए जस्टिफाई नहीं किया जा सकता है कि वो बहुत सालों से होती आई है शायद वो गलत भी हो सकता है एंड इन केस ऑफ एनिमल्स फॉर श्योर वी यू नो इट्स इट्स एब्सोल्यूटली रॉन्ग एंड इट्स नॉट राइट एंड वी कैन मेक कम्पैशनेट चॉइसिस हमें बाकी में सोचने की जरूरत है Amazing, Manisha. I'm uh, I'm really inspired by your example, honestly. जो आप कर रहे हो and um, I hope कि आप जैसे और parents आए and society में बहुत जल्दी ये shift आए 10-15 साल. Uh, you're right. नहीं कहा जा सकता total animal liberation कब but uh, for sure we can uh, you know speed up the process और mainstream में ये चीजें आएं और इन चीजों पे सवाल उठे और ये चीजें बदले. So that's the aim, right? and uh, i think people like you are doing great job because aap educate kar rahe hain kyunki jab hum vegan nahi hote hain kabhi hum sochte nahi hain in cheezon ke bare mein lekin uh, jab aapne jaisa sabse pehli cheez aapne boli ki sabse pehle vegan baniye to agar hum jab vegan banenge to hum in cheezon ke bare is direction mein hum sochna shuru karenge so yeah that's a first step amazing <laughs> मनीषा अब मैं आपसे ये जानना चाहती हूँ सिंस वी आर डूइंग दिस इन दिस टेन वीक्स टू वीगन ग्रुप इसमें नए वीगन से आप क्या एडवाइस देंगे नए वीगन को नए वीगन राइट राइट न्यू वीगन को एडवाइस बेसिकली इतना है कई सारी चीजें हैं कि uh, हमको फिगर आउट करने में काफी टाइम लगता है ऑल्टरनेटिव फिगर आउट करने में और uh, कभी कभी वो ऑल्टरनेटिव इतना इजीली अवेलेबल नहीं अभी भी इंडिया में ये बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है ऑल्टरनेटिव का बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है मुझे कई सारे लोग आके बोलते हैं कि uh, हम चेंज करना चाहते हैं बट हमको ऑल्टरनेटिव चाहिए हम ऑल्टरनेटिव uh, इतना इजीली अवेलेबल नहीं है uh, दो तीन चीजें हैं इसमें Uh, मैं बहुत फिलोसफिकल uh, या डीप लेवल में नहीं जाना चाहती हूँ बट uh, एक चीज मैं बताना चाहती हूँ कि वीगनिज्म सिर्फ एक डाइट नहीं है एक्चुअली ये uh, ये कई सारी चीजें हैं ऑल कंबाइंड इन वन इट्स अ सोशल जस्टिस मूवमेंट इट्स अ फिलोसफी एक्चुअली इट इज मोर देन अ डाइट इट इज अ फिलोसफी इट्स अ होलिस्टिक फिलोसफी वे वी डिसमेंटल द कमोडिटी स्टेटस ऑफ एनिमल्स इस चीज को पहले हम डिस्टर्ब और इसको ब्रेक कर रहे हैं हम एनिमल्स का जो एक स्टेटस है कमोडिटी की तरह पहले उस चीज को हम डिबंक और डिसमेंटल कर रहे हैं तो पहले तो ये एक फिलोसफी है तो जब हम इसको इस चीज को हम पहले रिकग्नाइज करना कर सकते हैं कि एनिमल्स आर नॉट कमोडिटीज उसके बाद हम इसको यू नो डाइट की तरह ना देख के अगर हम इसको एक होलिस्टिक फिलोसफी की तरह देखें जहां हम एनिमल्स को कमोडिटीज की तरह ही नहीं देख रहे हैं कि इंडिविजुअल की तरह देख रहे हैं दैट इज वेन आई थिंक हमारे लिए ये ऑल्टरनेटिव का होना ना होना मैटर करना बंद कर देगा दो आई एम ऑल्सो कॉग्निजेंट ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट येस अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल स्ट्रगल एंड एंड ऑल्टरनेटिव आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आई एम नॉट अंडर माइनिंग द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ ऑल्टरनेटिव I have personally struggled a lot. I still struggle. मतलब मेरे इतने मुझे इतने साल हो गए हैं अभी भी मैं जब travel करती हूँ मुझे बहुत तकलीफ होती है कई कई जगह जहां पर मुझे नहीं मिलता है खाना या खाना तो मिल ही जाता है कहीं ना कुछ ना कुछ बट टी इज अज चैलेंज फॉर मी मतलब जिन लोगों को टी का एडिक्शन है बहुत बहुत मुश्किल है क्योंकि यू नो इन लॉट ऑफ प्लेसेज यू डोंट इवन गेट ब्लैक टी मतलब कहीं 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 मुझे याद है मेरा यू uh, नो you know, इतना डेस्परेशन था चाय के लिए कि मैंने बोला कि भाई कहीं काला भी चाय मिल जाएगा तो मुझे वो भी चल जाएगा 
तो वो यू नो ब्लैक टी इज ऑल्सो नॉट अवेलेबल इन लॉट ऑफ प्लेसेज सो नाउ वट आई डू इज आई कैरी माई यू नो ओन ओट मिल्क सोय मिल्क समथिंग लाइक दैट बट कभी कभी अगर भूल गई तो बस लाइफ इज लाइफ वही एंड हो जाता है तो तो दैट इज अ थिंग सो आई आई अंडरस्टैंड द चैलेंजेस ऑफ यू नो पीपल हु आर न्यूली ट्रांजेक्शनिंग एंड दीज चैलेंजेस आर वेरी रियल I cannot undermine that, but again, you cannot look at veganism as just a diet or uh, you know uh, uh, alternatives. Ke availability or non-availability pe people should not you know base their decisions uh, on availability or non-availability because uh, once you uh, stop looking at animals as commodities, you will figure a way out. That's what I I have uh, realized that if you once you stop that, you will figure your way out. You will. no there is there is no dearth of information on uh, on the internet and you will figure your way find your way out there are so many diy recipes there are so many uh, things that you can do and once you uh, go the diy way i think there is no the, the opportunities are endless so so that's the message i want to give that don't give up because there is always a way uh, a lot of us have figured out struggled our way out of this uh, you know the non availability thing when uh, you know 10 years back when uh, so many alternatives were not available right now uh, when i see the shift from 10 years back i mean the the scenario has turned almost 180 degrees because uh, you know 10 years back there weren't anything there wasn't anything called vegan cheese even i didn't know what is vegan cheese honestly i started making vegan cheese or i came about came to know about this just maybe 7 8 years back 10 years back we didn't have uh, so many varieties of milk or so many uh, you know soy milk was available yes but soy milk was the only milk that there was but right now we have uh, you know ready to use oat milk almond milk coconut milk and soy milk and lot of other things so so change is definitely coming but again that's that's the message that you know don't give up because you know because i am not getting my butter or i'm not getting my cheese and what about my uh, you know chicken tikka and stuff like that because mm-hmm. i think if you are determined about this you will find your way and mm-hmm. that cannot be an excuse so so before you when you're making that excuse you think how difficult it is for you to abstain from eating cheese or uh, you know having a milk shake versus the mother who has who is losing her child i mean if you understand the magnitude of a cheeseburger versus a mother losing her child i think that is the time when you will put down the cheeseburger Uh, that that is the moment that is really the moment when you will put down the cheeseburger and you will probably you know think that it is horrific that some some mother has to lose her child because of your cheeseburger so how what is the value of a cheeseburger versus the value of uh, a mother losing her baby and a mother grieving for her baby so that that's i think that's the way of looking at it when you each time you feel uh rejected or hopeless that i am not my you know my god attempts are failing or uh you know i am not finding ice cream or i'm craving for this i think remind yourself about the suffering that some creatures are going through to so that you are able to eat an ice cream which probably you will not remember four hours later so so that's the thing and i think when the moment you realize that i think that ice cream also becomes like poison to you i don't know if today i i am okay i'm willing to go without ice cream for months but um, i haven't there are so many my my you know my extended family there are friends and relatives who eat ice cream in front of me but i just cannot you know stomach that if even if i'm giving to eat that or even if no one's watching i think if i start eating it i i really cannot swallow it because the moment i put it in my mouth i know that that's that's a huge amount of suffering i'm putting into myself exactly. so yeah so that that is where i think you know so so that's the message i think i can uh, you know send across wow yeah. i'm sure people who are listening to this new vegans uh manisha is so right we don't have to give up once we understand why we are doing something once we know that animals are the real victims i think our problems are i mean we can for sure find uh, find out we can figure out that okay what else can be used we can buy you know animal free products but you're so right uh, jab hum ek uh, victim ke perspective se dekhte hain to cheeze jo hame difficult lag rahi hai wo aasan ho jati hain right so uh, mm-hmm. it's a message to all the new vegans don't give up even if you're not getting alternatives seek support from you know the groups and that's that 
right because i think you know uh, i mean don't be scared of these failed attempts and don't be dejected mm-hmm. by the failed attempts because as i tell everybody that mm-hmm. everyone fails you know i learned through my failures like you know if if my curd has not set this time i do not go and buy dairy curd i figure i try to think what was what mm-hmm. went wrong in the process why am i not getting it right and then i try again and i try my second batch and maybe my second batch is is maybe like you know 50% better than what my last right. batch was and that right. is how i improve and by the time i make my fifth batch of curd it comes out perfect so that's what i'm trying to say that that is not just for uh, you know these dairy alternatives that's for everything in life that uh, you know uh, you will always figure a way out of solving rather than giving up mm-hmm. and saying i cannot do this uh, why don't you try again why don't you seek support i sought support i searched the internet i searched groups i talked to my friends i asked mm-hmm. people who make good curd that okay what is it mm-hmm. what is it that i'm doing wrong and mm-hmm. that is how i learned i learned through my mistakes i learned through support communities and support groups but that was not an excuse or that was not i did not use that as an escape route that this is not something i can it's not for me it's for everybody mm-hmm. veganism is for everybody uh, i mean when we say that this is not for me you are actually you know think of it you are actually saying that compassion is not for me or justice is not for me right i mean when you are saying no to veganism or when you are saying that no i can't be vegan you are actually mm-hmm. saying that no i cannot stand up for justice i cannot do what is right for mm-hmm. animals and for this planet so mm-hmm. uh, so you know so i think everyone should look at it that way if you fail today it doesn't matter you will you will definitely get your curd right some day but <laughs> your curd is not setting right cannot be a justification that you will go and you know steal uh, some continue some babies uh, yeah continue yeah. eating that and contributing to this huge amount of suffering Correct. So right, and uh, you're so right. You know, it's a somewhat learning opportunity. We can uh, try it again and again. We can see what went wrong, but we cannot justify that. Okay, I didn't get the alternative, or I, I can't make it. You know, homemade vegan curd is not nice. I mean, no, that's not a justification. So right, it's a learning opportunity and great message, Manisha. that never give up like seek support and do whatever you can and keep the real victims uh, in your mind keep reminding i mean remind yourself that why you're there and also Absolutely. you pointed out uh, this correctly that veganism is not something uh, you know somebody's choice it's not a matter of personal choice it is a moral stance against animal use and exploitation so you know if you are a compassionate person then this is the only choice it just you're facing some challenges and difficulties and there's always way har cheez ka solution hota hai right so absolutely yeah. see when when slavery ended i mean uh, I, i'm sure when slavery ended the suddenly the white people must have found it very difficult to do their own work when they had when they had slaves and they, they said their slaves free i'm sure they were so used to that luxury and so used to having their work done by the slaves i'm sure they faced a lot of difficulties but i don't think that can be a justification that oh i cannot wash my own clothes so i have to continue keeping slaves and i have to continue enslaving the black people and and that the black people are uh, you know inferior or they are meant or they have been put here on earth for my services or to wash my clothes i think that's that's the way of looking at it that you know your inconvenience cannot be a justification for continuing to be unjust to someone and when i say someone it is not just limited to animal uh, to humans uh, just like we ended slavery of man to man the slavery of animals to man is also equally wrong i mean uh, there is no justification because they are a different species they are different people i mean uh, a different species doesn't really mean that they are dumb or they they are they don't feel or they are worthless they they, they are a different Yeah. they are so, they are people they are personalities they are just a different different nation yeah. as as we can say so so just like just like you know uh, 100 years back we we you know looked at the blacks as uh, you know as meant to to serve the white people uh, we look at animals now as meant to serve humans but i'm sure 100 years down the line from today people will not think that and people will look back with disgust at this time when we are justifying animal exploitation or animal use as you know they are put here for us uh, because they are not just like the blacks mm-hmm. were never put here for for the white people to use and enslave yeah absolutely i um, i do not agree more 
and you have like said it all so so right it's it's not about their inconvenience matter uh manisha we have a question for you asta is asking mm-hmm. i have a question what do you say to people if they say that what about the people in north pole should they also go vegan uh they do not have option then what okay yes so, so uh, right i understand that's a very valid point yes so uh, so just like veganism is a, is a you know it's a moral stance and it's it's a philosophy of not looking at animals as commodities so i think we uh, are basically spreading this message to people who have access to plant based mm-hmm. food and we are not right now talking about people who are living on the fringes okay so mm-hmm. so marginalized mm-hmm. communities or people who are not who do not have access to uh, you know plant based food we are not uh, trying to spread this message to them and the idea is not to tell people that whether you're freezing or you are in in extreme desert climate or you are uh, in freezing north pole uh, you have to you know uh, eat vegetables whether you find it or not it's not like that but again come to think of it what percentage of the world population is actually living on the north pole or in sahara or uh, you know in in some extreme climate where they don't have access to plants uh, yeah. very very minuscule percentage right i think maybe not even 1% of the human population is living in the north pole or uh, you know and now if i'm i'm not talking about north pole but even a uh, few years back the arctic circle and these nordic nations like uh, norway uh, J- uh, norway sweden denmark uh these places being very cold climates also could not grow food but now with the advancement i mean now it's it's a global economy first thing and there is globalization and there is free trade and also uh, you know agriculture there are agricultural and technological advancements where people are growing food hydroponically without soil in controlled temperatures and in controlled uh, environment control surroundings so right now that even not is not even an excuse in nordic countries because i hear people uh being vegan in places like norway sweden denmark and they say that yes we have uh, access to ample uh, food, vegetables and fruits plant-based. and other plant based foods uh i mean europe being europe itself is a very cold uh, region but europe yeah. also has uh, you know plenty of plant based options and and a lot of people in europe are vegan and um, they are activists there and they have access to uh plant based food so even even when things are uh, you know things have reached till the arctic circle and the, and the nordic uh, region i think uh, you know right now in this condition that really is not an excuse and people who ask this question are actually not even sitting in the north pole if you have access to internet and you are in a position to ask that question it really means that you are sitting in a city where with good internet connectivity so if you have internet connection you also have access to good plant based food right. so so uh, and yeah. also whether or not whether or not people in the north pole can go vegan it should not be a hindrance to me going vegan right i am not in the north pole why should i use people in the north pole or uh, i also uh, get this question a lot of times what about the poor people or what about the people below poverty line so yes i mean what about them is a is a is a valid valid question and yeah, no one sh- yes that that is a very valid question but you are not the one under below poverty line right you are not the one yeah. sitting in north pole if you are sitting in a city and being able to use internet to ask me that question it clearly indicates that you are in a position to buy uh mm. plant based food and uh, you have access to everything to information to internet and to plant based food and you can easily go vegan so whether or not they can go vegan should not be something which should stop you from going vegan yeah absolutely i love that and you know it's about the person who is you know uh, um, who who come up with these questions we need to help them accountable for their actions like like you right. said that you are not living in north pole and you have this uh, internet availability right so talk about mm-hmm. you that's a different issue that they are they have their own set of uh, challenges and uh, right. you know right. experiences but mm-hmm. right now we are talking to you right and also right. we don't right. uh, preach veganism to people who are living in north <laughs> pole our audience is is uh, you know who can afford all of this and i think basic Absolutely. plant based food is available to all of us basic plant based food to sabko hi access hota hai absolutely absolutely so i absolutely. think uh, asa i hope you have uh, got to your answer manisha ne bahut uh, acche se uh, you know explain this and um, i think i cannot add more to this uh, what she has said 
that's uh, uh, thanks for asking Asta for 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 your question and thanks uh, Manisha for explaining it so well. Uh, Manisha, we are you know about to end this live stream. Before we go, could you please uh, explain the basic difference between a vegetarian, vegan, and plant based person person who is on plant based diet? Right. So uh, first thing is that vegetarian is a diet and vegan is not diet, as I said. Although when we talk about vegan food, when we talk about, I mean, when we specify the word food with vegan, it is about diet. But actually, uh, diet is just a part of it. I mean, when you are living, when you and when you are talking about a holistic philosophy or a lifestyle, veganism is actually a lifestyle where we, uh, you know, uh, I mean, first thing, it's a philosophy that mm. animals are not for our use. They are not commodities to use. They are people. Mm. So, uh, so everything else stems from that philosophy, our diet, our lifestyle, everything that we do stems from that philosophy that animals are not commodities. So when we uh, recognize this fact that animals are not commodities, we stop using them in our food, in our clothing, in our entertainment, in every, every walk of life. So vegan food, food is just a part of that lifestyle because food is a very integral part of lifestyle. Uh, so that is why we say vegan food, but veganism is not just food or diet. Vegetarian is just diet and it's just the uh, absence of meat in our food, uh, abstinence from food. But vegetarianism is not a moral stance or it's not, not uh, about, you know, recognizing animals as, uh, you know, as people or as uh, you know that they are not for our use that's not what vegetarianism does vegetarianism just abstains from the use of meat or uh, i mean even eggs to a certain extent although in some countries eggs are vegetarian but that's okay i mean they just recognize as meat as not veg but uh, everything else that is not meat is veg but that's that's those are the intricate intricate parts of it but vegetarianism is is just a diet it is not a philosophy or it does not even look at animals as as people or as entities. Um, what was the other one that you asked? As plant -based. Uh, plant based, yes. Plant based diet. Yes, plant based again is a diet. Again, as I said, that when you talk about veganism as a lifestyle, food is a part of it, and plant based is what we call a diet. Plant based is a diet where we do not eat anything that comes from animals, but uh, when we talk about plant based diet, a person who is on plant-based diet may or may not be uh, vegan because that person might be using other things. I mean, he just does not eat things that comes from animals. He might be wearing leather. He might be using, uh, you know, uh, things that come. I mean, uh, he might be using leather, wool or silk or he might be uh, using cosmetics or other things that are tested on animals because those are not part of the diet. For his health, to improve his health, he might not be eating things that comes from animals, but uh, but yes, but when he doesn't claim that he's vegan and he's just on a plant-based diet, then he, he might be contributing to other forms of exploitation. He might be visiting zoos, he might be uh, using, uh, you might be riding horses or, uh, you know, he might be contributing, yes, contributing to other forms of animal exploitation, but not food. And also the food part, also probably he is just, uh, you know, doing it to improve his health and not uh, from the perspective of uh, animal rights or, uh, you know, not because he thinks that animal use or abuse is wrong. Uh, though definitely there is no, uh, I, I do not believe in, uh, you know, shaming anybody or like, you know, being criti critical of people who are on plant-based diet or who have committed to a life of plant-based diet. Uh, even though it is, uh, you know, it is for his health. I see this tendency among a lot of people to criticize people who are on plant-based diet because they are not vegans. But, but I, I personally don't believe in that because, you know, even if a person is not eating animals, uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to an animal why he or she is not getting killed. Whether it is the person's health or it is the person's, uh, you know, ethics, it doesn't matter to the animal. If, if even one less animal is being killed, at the end of the day, it matters a lot. So I think, uh, yes, we should try in every way. There are also people I see that who are, who are finding difficulties to make changes in their diets, but they are willing to give up leather and wool and other things immediately or use... Uh, Exactly. cosmetics that are vegan or or uh, you know switch to cruelty free cosmetics so i think every man, every effort counts and we should not be shaming anyone for whatever little efforts they are making so even mm -hmm. if someone says that okay to change my diet will take some time 
but i am immediately willing to you know stop using leather or you know stop visiting zoos or stop contributing to other forms of animal exploitation mm-hmm. i think that person should be encouraged and for the diet part that person should be support, supported mm-hmm. similarly for people who are already on plant based diet we can say that okay since you are already sparing animals from your plate why not you know extend this to other you know in other walks of life i mean right now there are alternatives and and alternatives to things that are not not food like things like accessories and clothing those alternatives are very easily available i mean uh, they are they are more readily available than food so i think uh, right now there is no excuse that a person should continue to you know exploiting animals or abusing animals right, right. so this this is the difference between uh vegetarian vegan and plant based yeah. wow amazing uh, manisha you have covered everything you're so right uh, uh i think after this people uh, will really understand that you know by being vegan they are they are not just uh, making a small uh, change in their uh, diet but they are uh, you know uh, actually saving animals in the sense that there there's a mental shift right uh, it's a it's a moral stance so it's about their ethics so they they are val- valuing animals like they are respecting basic animal rights so right i hope uh, you know people who are going to watch this and uh, who are uh, who are new um, unko ye fark samajh aayega they will get the uh, difference and thank you so much for um, you know so amazingly explaining all of it right um any any last message before you go uh, before we end this live stream uh yes i mean if anyone has any questions i am on facebook so uh, you know you can uh, i mean you know send me messages on my inbox i will be very happy to answer uh, this group is already there to help people you know share recipes whatever questions people have they can put put it across here whether it is uh regarding the diet or the philosophy or why it is wrong so uh, so the final message and since i know this is a group of absolutely new vegans uh my uh, firstly i would like to congratulate everyone and you know it is so nice to see more and more people joining the tribe and uh, the final message as i always say don't give up because uh, i don't believe that it is impossible for anybody uh, anyone can be vegan and it is you know i have seen very hardcore meat eaters uh, people who who said i can i can give up everything but i cannot give up cheese people such people going vegan i have been raised in a bengali family and that that i mean you know we as a community are very uh, you know we are into hardcore um, meat fish we are a meat and fish eating community not to mention dairy products but i mean all in all we we are huge consumers of animal uh, products animal based food so uh, so we have a steady growing community of bengali vegans too Wow. so so if i could i mean i i can relate and i can i always tell everybody that you know i being raised in that kind of a family i used to uh, love fish so much that i mean i i have been at one point in time i have said that probably i can give up eating meat eggs and everything but i cannot give up eating fish that is just just you know if i stop eating fish i really don't know what i will be eating because i never used to eat any meal of my day without fish or you know uh, if if some day i would have to eat vegetarian food i used to grumble so much that oh god what is this i mean you know i am not able to eat today but uh, you know when you connect and when you realize that you have like that to this yeah yes so so you know that that is what i'm saying that when you when you actually connect and when you re- relate to the suffering of that creature uh you know your taste really becomes so unimportant it it fades mm-hmm. fades away somewhere you know you really cannot i mean i could not do this i i really could not continue uh, you know putting my uh, conscience at you know i couldn't keep killing my conscience and continue eating that because after a point in time when i realized the amount of suffering these creatures go through uh even even when i used to put that food into my mouth i really couldn't swallow it it it, it became that traumatic for me so i think that should be that should be the connection that every person has to make if if every person makes that kind of a connection uh when you know that your food is the result of so much suffering and you will realize that i don't think anything is worth that amount of suffering mm-hmm. so you know your alternatives your taste is not not that important that someone has to suffer so much for it so i will always say don't give up 
uh you might not uh, also to set expectations right i some i do not personally i don't support a lot of people say that these uh, mock meats or whatever these mock things that have come out in the market they taste exactly like meat uh, no sorry i mean i come from a very hardcore meat eating family i have eaten meat all my life no they don't taste anything like meat uh so i do not uh, believe in setting these false expectations but what i will say that they are equally good alternatives they are equally good substitutes they taste good so at the end of the day whether they taste exactly like meat when you say that term exactly no it doesn't and uh, i'm i'm sure there are a lot of uh, you know meat alternatives in the west and us that taste exactly uh, like the real thing uh, i have heard those kind of reviews which is fine again there is no problem if it does but in india we still don't have mock meats that have been able to replicate the exact taste of meat but they are on, on their own stand alone they are very good so my point is that be open to new palate tastes break the conditioning the first thing to being vegan is that you have to break the conditioning do not look for the taste of cow milk and peanut milk or soy milk you will not find it so don't come with this expectation or don't try soy milk with the expectation that it is going to taste like cow milk because then you will be disappointed and then you will say that oh this is not for me but if you if you if you see the flavor of soy milk or almond milk or uh, peanut milk or any milk for that matter they have their own taste profile they have their own nutritional profile so you have to break the conditioning you have to stop looking for the exact taste you have to forget the old taste actually honestly speaking when you become vegan you have to undo everything that you have been doing all this while you have to undo you have to forget the old flavors that you are used to eating and consuming and you have to open your mind and your taste to new kind of taste profiles so everything is i mean i have been uh, eating vegan for again as i said more than a decade now and more than uh, 10 years and i really do not miss anything from my non vegan days because i have figured out a way of uh, substituting everything and i have uh, you know uh, for me i am i don't expect that uh, mock meat will taste like chicken or uh, you know uh, soy milk will taste like cow milk I, i am done with that actually i have moved on from that taste and i have moved to a different kind of palate altogether so this is what i want to tell new vegans is that uh, please unlearn or please undo what you have been eating all this while and please i mean i think it's a culinary adventure actually which everyone will like you know when you uh, stop having this expectation that i want my peanut milk to taste exactly like cow milk that is when the disappointment sets in but when you actually look at it as a new adventure that okay doesn't matter if it doesn't taste like cow milk let me see how it tastes and it tastes very good so that is when the new adventure begins so nothing you cannot begin anything new if you hold on to the old right so my message would be that you know just undo what you have been doing all this while and open yourself to a new adventure altogether so wow. so i would like to end on that note wow and it's amazing i love your uh, outlook on new things and uh, you're so right when we come up with these expectation that it should taste like uh, the cow's milk or you know any other thing so that's where we get disappointed but once we understand that you know there is a suffering involved in that uh, animal based food then there is no going back it's about ethics and uh, yeah we will develop taste eventually right with uh, like by trying vegan curd or vegan meat or whatever but yes we should not give up and we should not you know really have those uh, expectations ki aisa hi ho it's about it's okay it's a new taste you know ye wahi wali cheez hai jo aapne bola we have to earn learn so many things and you're so right it's uh, somewhere jo aapko bahut ek positive outlook hai ki aap cheezon ko ek 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 naya adventure ki tarah dekhte ho ek experimental are wow ye you know it's a experimental thing because you will be uh, trying new taste naye flavors aane wale hain aapki kitchen mein what you have already been doing so it's it's fun agar aap us nazariye se cheezon ko dekho to So right, thanks right. for sharing you know your authentic experience with us I would say and <laughs> personally I have learned a lot from you right now so thanks for coming here and uh, amazing I mean I'm really uh, you know thankful ki aap jaise log itna acha kaam kar rahe hain you're inspiring us and you are you know setting examples or challenges aapne apne share kiye aur hame inspiration milti hai ki it's okay we can also do it हर चीज का सोल्यूशन है
so to, yeah. so you're taking your bottom line ki never give up uh, aapko you will find ways you will manage right we that's how we all learn i think i mean yeah. that's been my journey so i i really feel very sad when people say that this is not for me i am i'm failing so many times only through failed attempts we learn so, oh, so that's the thing right. yeah right great message i'm i'm so glad that we are ending this live stream with such a great message uh thank you so much for coming here and looking forward it's my you. honor it's i'm i enjoyed i enjoyed the session equally i mean i am always you know looking forward to uh, you know talking about these things especially for new uh, you know people who are joining this community and who are new uh, in this uh, you know and and the reason why i feel uh i feel like i should be doing this especially for new vegans is because i learned through a lot of challenges there was no one to mm-hmm. hold my hand so i mm-hmm. feel that you know lack of information should never be a hindrance lack of information should not stop someone from uh, you know choosing this uh, this compassionate ethical. way of life yeah i'm yes ethical way of life because for me it was a very very uphill challenge where uh, you know i had to figure out everything myself there were failed attempts there were things gone bad things not working out and uh, i also lost a lot of weight initially because i couldn't figure out what i had to eat i became sick a lot of people criticized me they said that see this is why you are you know this is why veganism is such a stupid thing because you are falling sick but so we can't afford to do that you know we have to show by example so now when i am healthy and when when i tell people even when i go for street outreaches i tell people do i look sick or unhealthy to you so if i'm not sick or unhealthy uh, you must know that this is doable by everyone so so i had to actually struggle from uh, you know i lost actually i lost 10 kilos of weight and then i it was a trigger i mean you know an alarm bell for me and i thought that no this this cannot be there, there is definitely something i'm not doing right it cannot be a reason for me to go back to eating meat and fish i lost 10 kilos because i was just eating potatoes and rice i have to figure out how to eat healthy and i'm sure if i eat healthy i will definitely get there so then again i did a lot of research i ate well and then i regained my health and everything else so this is why i feel so strongly about this is the uh, about the hand holding part is that i did not have anyone to uh, you know go to so i should be that support for everyone whoever is you know interested so that's that's wow. it really considerate of you manisha really considerate uh you're so right and i think you thank you i i would say you're leading by example you're leading by thank example thank you so much i think that's inspiration hum sab aise hi kar sakte hain challenges aapne aapki journey sach mein bahut alag rahi hai aur challenges rahe hain but aap jaisa insaan agar kar sakta hai so for sure you know people like us who are turning vegan now in 2022 it's definitely right. more easy to easy to absolutely hai nahi aisa ki nahi ho sakta ye doable hai it's, right. it's for everyone it's for everyone right right yeah. so all right manisha uh, i am ending thank you thank now. you a lot yes yes it's been my absolute pleasure thank you so much and thank you everyone bye i i share the sentiment bye take care bye everyone bye yeah bye, bye everyone bye bye